Hey, what is up guys? I'm KBHD here and welcome to the sequel to the previous video. So the part two, which is the mini factory tour with Elon. I want to preface it just with the intro by saying, first of all, it is really difficult to shoot good video in that factory. As you'll both see in here, it's extremely loud and extremely busy. So this is more of just like a walking around and having fun and checking things out. Uh, it's it's actually probably just like 15 or 20% of the actual Model S and X factory process. It's not the whole thing. It's mostly just Elon showing us around. And uh, in fact, I didn't even really say much during this interview. It was more just like a, I was kind of like a kid in the matrix, just kind of absorbing everything. And then it also kind of cuts abruptly at the end when Elon basically gets pulled into his next meeting. But I still thought it was a ton of fun and worth sharing. And also I should mention this entire video shoot, this production would not be possible without my buddy John from the TLD channel and his crew who helped with audio, who were the muscle with the steady cam. He has an entire behind the scenes video of this process on his channel. I'll link that right below. So if you wanna check that out after watching this in part one, feel free. But until the next one, this is your mini tour of the Tesla factory with Elon. Enjoy. One that loops back and like I said, just gives, gives us access to the central cargo. Yeah. Um, so it's really just like lifting it up and over. So the, the car that ends up here came all the way down this previous? Yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. So it's, like, these robots are really just to give us ac uh, like through, through oh. access. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's going to pick it up and transfer it to the other robot. Yeah. Um, but I, I think like, uh, you know, like a design improvement we should do is like really just the one robot should just pass it to the other robot. Um, just pick it up. Yeah, oh, like, there's a third one above us. Yeah, it's like it puts it on a table, the table rotates. It's like, like if we do this, if we did this over, we would just have that giant robot pass it to that giant robot. Fair. Yeah. Hand off. Yeah. Like, right. like, there's like a thousands of like little things like that that help improve production. The General Assembly kind of operates in kind of a U. So it goes, cars come in over there, go all the way down here, and then all the way that way. Okay. Um, and uh, you can see the car get progressively more complex as it goes down the general assembly line. What does it look like when it starts this side of the assembly line? Oh, we can go there. Can All we right. go there? Let's should do we, it. Should we start there? Start at the beginning? Yeah, or? might as well. But here you can get a good sense for, there's like, like general assembly is what I was talking about as being really well suited to people. Okay. Uh, because you got a lot of weird things that you got to put together. Like, you know, like look at some of these, um, you know, assemblies that like, like it's pretty hard for a robot to like connect this on. That makes sense. Yeah, it's, you know, and like depending upon how it comes out of the box, it could be like in a little different position, but it's pretty easy for somebody to like, oh, it's uh, it's like, I just need to move it like an inch, you know, bolt it in. It's no probably problem. really hard to write software to yeah. kind of know to yeah. adapt in all these different ways. Yeah, it's like if you try to, order, if you try to have the robot do this, you gotta have like a complicated vision system and then like the vision system bolts out, it's like, it's not quite right. That's um, the hard part. We we have a, a robot in our studio that moves a camera around, and the hardest part is when it faults. Yeah, you need a person there to know what to do. Exactly. So hopefully that doesn't happen much. Um, like for for parts that are that are complicated and fiddly, like uh, wiring harnesses are especially difficult. You see how like the wiring harness kind of needs to snake uh, through the car. Yeah. It's it's literally like like winding like a snake through the car. Yeah. You got to like poke it through holes and and do, do various things. That's super difficult for a robot. See like how they're like putting the, uh, yeah, the part of the air conditioning system there? Right. Um, so you use like a little bit of mechanical assistance with the winch and whatnot, but then it's pretty straightforward for the guys to just like get that in there. And then like, if they see there's an issue with the part, then like they say, oh, this part's got a problem. We'll like, we'll put it over here for, to, you know, um, to get fixed. Like this is like semi lines like moving slowly. Yeah. So like moves along. Um, and then if, um, you know, it gets people like time to, to get things done, like you can like stand on this and I and think you work. mentioned like the, the speed of the car coming out the other side is like one mile an hour or something like that. Yeah, it's super slow. You want to speed this up, right? Yeah, it's not, it's not even one mile an hour. It's even slower than that right now. We'll play SX, but for, for three, it's like getting close to a mile an hour. Okay, okay. Um, but like walking speed is three miles an hour, so it's like only one third walking speed at one mile an hour. All right. But you can see like, when you look on the inside of the car, you can see like how many little complicated little pieces there are. A lot. Um, you know, the things that are meant to, uh, for insulation, corrosion protection, um, airbags, uh, uh, road noise, like it's all the stuff that gets put in here. Yeah. And you can see like these are like the side airbags here. Oh, okay. Um, 
Like most people, I think it's like pretty cool. Like most people never see like the inside of the car. Yeah, there's a million things you never see yeah. driving the car every day. Sure. This is like, sorry guys, sorry to interrupt. That's how I managed to make me look. If you don't mind being on like, on like you know the internet and stuff, is that cool? All right, YouTube's cool. I actually don't want to interrupt your work, but um, you know it's like you see like how like there's like a lot of tricky pieces, and like if. For a person, like this is like doable. Straightforward. Yeah, you know, it takes a bit of training, get up to speed, whatever. But like once, once you like, um, basically, if, like, a, like a pro human can do this super well, and it's like hard for the robots to do that. But I, when we go to the, the like the body welding, I'll show you yeah. like what's like what's a robot good at. Um, and awesome. you'll see like there's tons of robots, like tons of people here, tons of robots there. Um, but there's so much complexity and variation here. Um, you gotta like thread those wires when it comes through. Especially like, here, yeah. with this door. So, so like, th this is a car with like less stuff in it, and then it goes. It's you know, well, and we'll see the beginning of it. Right. And then that, then it goes all the way around, gets more and more stuff added. And Does then, it end at the end? Of, well, general assembly ends probably yeah. somewhere down there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, but you can see, it's interesting to see the car get progressively more complex as we add more parts to it. You know, this place uh, used to employ like about 5,000 people, uh -huh. and now we got like we got we got 10,000 people just in this location. Yeah. So what we do is we have like tons of shuttles and like uh, we encourage ride sharing. Yeah. Uh, we got the very rapid transit station finally like went went up. Um, so just like trying to get people here is is not easy. It's a big challenge. Yeah. What is this? Oh, this is uh, actually like this is one of my favorite dumb robots. Okay. Yeah. I'm a fan right now. It's pretty cool. Um, so like there's a lot of fancy robots uh, that like, but they have like lots of issues and they break down all the time. But these little guys are super great. But like, they follow this magnetic stripe. Uh -huh. See basically it's like super easy to program. You don't even need to be a programmer. Because just like lay down the, the, the mag stripe. And it'll follow it. Yeah, it just follows the mag stripe and That's then it's it. got uh, proximity sensors in the front. So. If, if it sees an obstacle or sees like something in the way, it just stops. And then right. as soon as something moves out of the way, it just keeps going. You know, just like, does this like little thing all day long, like a little train. Yeah, like you're talking about robots bolting out. And one of the, it's like, that's like where, like actually um, doing things manually can, can, can actually be more, um, more efficient because if you have like a lot of complicated robots, particularly if you have a 24 seven operation like we have with Model 3, uh, then if robot faults out, you got to have 24/7 like advanced robot technicians. Makes sense. And then if the robot uh, like accidentally crashes and like breaks a the fixture, then it's like man, okay, now we're, now we've got the line, we've got the line down. It's Do you like have to red alert, and then I get pulled on my cell phone at two in the morning, and it's yeah, like yeah, not a lot of like, fun. Fly apart from Germany. It's like we literally had that two days ago. Do you have <laughs> to when you get new robots? Do you build the robots or do you order them in and program them? Uh, so. Uh, there's like different classes. There's many, many different types of robots. So, yeah. the like the giant robot that we saw lifting the car yeah. is like it's, that's that that is a catalog item. But then we have to program the the, the motions, right. um, and then and the end effector is that is custom. Okay. So the end effector that picks up the car, drops it off. That's a custom made uh, thing. Okay. So it's kind of like you you kind of like buy this like powerful arm, but yeah. it's just like having an arm stuck in the ground, and then you're like, okay, what does the arm do? You got to tell it everything to do. Yeah. Okay. And then you got to put sensors on it and put fixtures. But that's like kind of uh, like that robot over there. Uh, that's also one of like the ones that picks up the car. Oh, uh, by the way, these are like named after X Men. Oh yeah, okay. I forgot about that. Um, Just X Men? I, I feel like, like you might Marvel, have too many. It's like Marvel and X Men. It's like you got to start to run out of names. Yeah, yeah. This like actually turns out a lot of X Men, by the way. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> so you can see like this is like quite a beast of a robot. You can just buy that robot. You know, in this case, it's a Fanuc robot, um, and uh, you can buy the robot. But then the end effector that's carrying the car um, is something that's custom, and then you got to do the programming and the like, wire in the sensors and that kind of thing. So. To the the level of precision of this massive robot, is it to like, as far as repeatable action, is it literally the same path every single yeah. plus or minus an inch? Oh no, it's. Uh, Centimeter? It's, it's better than that. It, it, for a big robot, there's a little less precision than a smaller robot. Yeah. But say a medium-sized robot will be accurate to 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeters. Oh, okay. What is the most popular paint color coming through here? That's black. Black? Yeah. It actually varies by country. 
Um, oh, interesting. Like, um, watch out! There's a dumb robot coming through. Oh yeah, no, this guy's like pretty, pretty cool. Like, watch. <laughs> All right, this could go wrong. I don't know. You trust him more than I do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Exactly. All right. All okay. Right. All right. Good job. Good job, robot. Yeah, no, I, I see a lot of silver, and I see a lot of white Model X. Yeah, Just yeah, in so, New Jersey. Uh, black and white are the two most colors, uh, two most popular colors. Okay. Um, the white and black are, are like black slight is is slightly more popular than white in the U.S. But in like Europe, it's way more popular. Like white is a very rare color in Europe for a car. Okay. Um, in the U.S., it's like it's it's about even with with black. Black and white are the two most common colors. Got yeah. it. And here you can see battery pack. This is like this be like a mating station for the battery pack. Oh, this is literally connecting the battery to the yeah. car. Here you can see it's like a combination of manual and automatic. So it's it's like they're lining it's, it up. It's like yeah, exactly. It's a it's, it's done primarily by the robot system, by the automated system, but then you've got a person just making sure that the fine tuning is there. Gotcha. How do you feel about matte, matte or satin colors? I actually, you asked about that a lot. I actually like the aesthetics of matte. Uh -huh. It's really tricky to, to repair matte. So, like okay, with glass, yeah. you can polish it out. With yeah. matte, um, if you get like a little ding, it's really hard to then rematch the, so it looks like an even mat. Yeah. You can't just like, you know. That's a fair point, yeah. Um, so it's, it's doable, it's, it's something actually we would like to do mat in the future, um, but um, like right now, for example, like pa the paint shop's really operating at full tilt, so adding any complexity to the paint shop would not be wise right now, but right. I think it'd be a cool thing to do in the future. But these are sub-assemblies, so you can see like the front and rear drive units being built up. Yeah. And the self-assemblies then feed the main assembly line. These are a long assembly line. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, and it's, it's integrating uh, S and X. Okay. And it's making about 2,000 cars a week. Is Model 3 entirely, completely separate? I guess yes. inside the same building, but separate the, whole uh, process. The only place where Model 3 uh, and S and X come together is in the paint shop. So the paint shop is processing S3 and X um, simultaneously down the same line. Gotcha. Uh, but otherwise, general assembly is separate, body is separate, um, yeah, everything else is separate. So just the paint shop where they come together. You've mentioned you've slept in the factory to be able to immediately like diagnose problems and hands-on fix what's not right. What type of things happen that you can immediately fix or immediately take action on? Actually, last, last three months last year, I mostly spent at Giga Factory. Um, uh, trying to uh, help fix the battery production, so module production, um, and it's just it's a lot of little things like looking at at, at each uh, at each little little tiny part, each process. Say is the process necessary? It's like because the, the best part is no part, best part of process is no process, and occasionally at the design level you think something's necessary, but then it turns out it's not. So it's just like making sure connect, connecting between design um, and manufacturing. Uh, make sure make sure we close the loop on that. Um, uh, just saying like, hey, is, is this, if it, let's say it's a, 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 it's like, a, it's a lot of real simple stuff, but it's like times times a thousand. Yeah. So if we have like a automated bolt driver going in, like what's the RPM, the torque settings for the bolt driver? Um, can we make that go faster? Uh, usually, usually can. Unnecessary movements. Um, like, like for example, I actually don't really like the fact that we lift the cars over and, and, and back. Um, yeah. it, Ideally, it, that would be a robot handoff, yeah, robot. getting rid of a middle stage. Yeah, exactly. Because the middle stage, what the robot is like putting it on a turntable, and then the turntable is rotating, and the other robot's picking it up. It's actually, the problem is like sometimes the turntable breaks down. Oh. And, and so, okay, so it's like, okay, let's eliminate the turntable and just have a robot go to robot. Um, and then you don't have like, uh, turntable breakage to consider. So it's a lot of uh, minimizing things that can go wrong and maximizing the efficiency of the simple things that go it's, right. It's like, um, desi like design necessity of, of every part of it and, and every process. Yeah. Uh, the, the speed at which, um, especially the robots are going, um, are there, um, 
Are there any, is there any unnecessary movement in the production line that, that isn't value added, like we're actually doing something? Yeah. Um, for, like replacing part, uh, elements of the production system that are not... Um, not needed or redundant. Yeah, exactly.